Morning. Uh, so, before we begin about how and what Polkadex is, I would like to uh, say that this talk was supposed to be by Gautam, my co-founder, but unfortunately he was not able to make it. So I hope I'm able to do justice to his talk today. Um, the concept of Polkadex was um, go back in time in 2018 when there was a Web3 summit by Dr. Gavin. And for all of the technologies stack that we are discussing in Polkadot Decoder today and yesterday, there are a set of other people in the world who gets excited every time a new functionality or a feature is built into Polkadot Decoder. So being an entrepreneur myself, I was really excited by what Polkadot is building. And we decided that Polkadot and its tech stack is perfectly suited for building an exchange. Um, because right now, there are no exchanges that can handle very heavy transaction and uh, the kind of experience that you have in a centralized exchange, as you know. So, if you put it in a nutshell, AMM DEXs are pretty cool, but they don't have the kind of experience that we have when you interact with a uh, centralized exchange. So, we are trying to include the order book and the high frequency trading and native interoperability. There may be products which are very focused on each of these things, but everything put together, it has never really been done in a very efficient way. So, our thought philosophy is to reduce the trust level to a point where you can still have a product which will help you to exchange the assets at the same time make sure that you remain in full control of your uh, assets at all times so we ended up building a layer to dex infrastructure that provides high frequency trading experience with uh, interoperability using parachains for users without the custody of assets. This is actually in a nutshell what we're doing. But the technology stack that we have taken out of Polkadot actually depends on four key areas. Because we decided that we cannot build this, text, uh, this product on, because we are actually focused on the product. We are not here to build protocols. So every protocol that has been rolled out into the system we think of how we can actually make those protocols to be useful to be fitted into a product like an exchange. So the first one is the forkless upgrade because we know that as we move forward, there will be changes in the mechanisms or consensus or anything that needs to be iterated in the future. So we cannot rely on a consensus protocol where its state transition is built into it. So here we have a runtime upgrade mechanism in Polkadot, which will help us to make sure that, because an exchange is a very, uh, you know, basically it's a complex state, state transition. So we don't want to uh, rely on a system that will keep us rigidly uh, focused on one chain. And the second one is the off-chain worker concept, where you have, you can be flexible with really compute intensive uh, executions to be carried out on off-chain workers or separate servers and still the runtime can identify those uh, transactions with unique signatures coming out of these off-chain workers. And then if you listen to uh, Dr. Gavin Wood's presentation yesterday regarding the governance palette, it is a very interesting feature which talks about delegated assets. So we wanted to be creative with that functionality by allowing people to delegate the asset to another person who holds a signature and make sure that the person who is handling your asset is not able to obviously run away with your funds. So that was also utilized for the design of the architecture. And 
We also have one more very key feature which was used, which is arbitrary message passing. Because right from the beginning, we knew that when you have to design a blockchain very focused on handling balance transfers, we cannot be building smart contracts onto the um, you know, system because it will reduce the efficiency of the blockchain. So our goal was to eliminate every other uh, functions from the blockchain and just focus on balance transfers and asset transfers. That's it. So suppose other parachains come up with complex uh, you know, functionalities like smart contracts or whatever they want to build. Any DApp that actually is going to build on these parachains, like Moonbeam or any other composable, uh, had a great presentation previously. So imagine their applications can interact with an exchange like this or an exchange of asset mechanism like this. There will be a requirement for arbitrary message passing. So since in a blockchain, nobody keeps time, right? For every blockchain, the consensus and the finality is the time. So here we have a network of multi-chains where you have a finality maintained by the relay chain, which means that we knew that the, if there are applications built on other smart contract parachains, they can always interact with our parachain on the Polkadot network much more easily and create a very efficient system of liquidity sharing and trade finality, which is not possible if you look at a very heterogeneous uh, kind of architecture in a blockchain. So timekeeping is a great advantage when you become a parachain. The relay chain keeps the time. And coming down to the last part of the uh, design is the interface, because you want to create the exact same interface for the time being we have introduced an operator who will maintain the front end at the same time will not have any control over any of the other parts of the system where the responsibility of the operator is simply to provide the infrastructure or the computing uh, resource to the whole uh, platform. So this can be decentralized in the future but at the time being we don't want to make it too complicated so with this kind of a design we have uh, we are very confident and we believe that we have brought the trust level to the minimal, to the point where you are able to create an exchange with minimal risk of, uh, you know, depending on a central authority. So well, so finally, that's, that's how we have put it together. So you end up with an exchange with a great UI UX response. It's like very instant finality of the transactions, which is actually achieved by an enclave technology introduced on the operator side so that the operator cannot change the code or operator cannot cheat or operator cannot make any modifications the way they uh, you know, manage the order book because the, the, the order book execution is actually registered on the blockchain through governance. And then obviously this is the key area, arbitrary message passing, which means that if we are able to build or bridge liquidity from any layer one or whatever effort that we bring in, any parachains will be able to utilize the XCM message passing to place arbitrary trades on the Polkadex order book, which is pretty cool because I feel like, you know, if there is a smart contract logic which says that, okay, I want to sell this asset for this price, if the application wants to decide on the, you can directly do it on the order book without the need of any oracle. So, Enclave side is already explained. So, Enclave basically is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a trade-off, but which will serve the purpose for now as we launch it in the first version. So, this is basically uh, another advantage in the future. Uh, as we already saw in the previous talks, it's not easy to create bridges with proof-of-work uh, layer one chains. So, for the time being, uh, you know, if you look at the future, uh, you know, the set of parachains and the system of bridging allows Polkadex to leverage on that and make sure that we are able to bring in assets from other layer one chains if you have all of these uh, interoperability being built in into that.
So it completes the complete parachain interoperability, and uh, you also have opportunity for, uh, you know, because it, uh, Polkadex is not just a uh, decentralized exchange in the sense that you are creating an incentivized gaming ecosystem around it so that there is no central authority that needs to make sure that people engage in trades or you know they have some sort of uh, motivation to come and use it so we have tried to make it as straightforward as possible because uh, we have a chain that actually produces value so why not get the blockchain to pay for these people and these people will pay back to the blockchain so it's like you know uh, interchangeable of interchange of values so it's, that's why we call it, it's not just a spot trading dex it is much more than that because of the ecosystem we are trying to build around it so if uh, those of you are confused about why we need a parachain it's because of the reason that we really need a blockchain which is very dedicated for uh, balance transfers that's what we believe in and we want to make sure that uh, it is not used for any other uh, because it's not similar to other uh, composable uh, parachains and you also have the uh, the way that we are planning to build the ecosystem of traders is to have a system of delegated assets where you can have users to uh, you know delegate their assets to a fund manager or an asset manager in the futures which he can decide for the user to place the trades and we can have a decentralized rating mechanism where at some point you decide okay I want to delegate my X amount of BTC to this asset manager which has a very good score so he will trade for you and you, you can just make the take a share of the profit so these are things that we can actually use so so I think uh, the tech stack that we have today has really grown over the years and uh, what Polkadot offers to uh, you know build an exchange like this is uh, tremendous and and it's perfectly suited and every time there is a new uh, functionality which I think the first day uh, the, the presentation about the the light land uh, on the browser based light lands again that's again which is something which uh, excites people like me where you know we, we are trying to make this uh, text stack to be actually useful for the people we actually uh, we interact at the user level so we feel that we are able to do justice with whatever is available to us there could be you know, um, feedback is welcome. There could be drawbacks, but at the same time, we have to realize that there is like, if you take the all-or-nothing approach, you are not going to get anywhere. So you have to start with something, and then build forward from there. Well, the future goal is very obvious because once you have an ecosystem of uh, uh, traders, you can always have uh, other. Uh, complex financial instruments uh, built on it, which is like a very straightforward approach to uh, offer, and people can actually uh, utilize all of these assets that we are trying to bring on Polkadex. Well, that's the end of the presentation. If there is anything that you want to ask me, I'm happy to answer. I think I'm well ahead of time. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, you have plenty of time. So does anyone have any questions from Vivek? Man, I'm going blind up here. All right. Well, no questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Can, can hey, Stefan. Can you explain the One second. A mic is coming to you. Okay. Um, hello, Vivek. Can you explain hey, the um, TR bridge a little bit more? The advantages of um, the, the TR bridge? I'd come again, please. I didn't. Uh, you didn't understand? Ah, oh, OK. Um, can you explain the, um, uh, the advantages of the TR bridge a little bit more? TR? Yeah. TR bridge. Oh, TR bridge. Okay. Yeah. Thank I didn't you. stress on TR bridge because I think it was, uh, you know, uh, indirectly mentioned that we do have a solar chain because we have uh, a limitation that we don't have a, a usable bridge with Ethereum as of now. So when you're focused on the product, you need to have um, some sort of a system to bridge these assets from Ethereum. And uh, we have used the, extensively actually used the off-chain worker mechanism to basically modify and create a set of uh, validators 
who will be helping to bridge these assets using multi-party ECDSA. So it is completely out of the, uh, you know, the current tech stack. So we want to make sure that we are able to bridge these assets in a decentralized way so that you don't have to trust the exchange again. Because if you still go with the existing bridges, there is uh, always, uh, you know, the, the talks are full of problems with bridges, you know, bridges getting hacked. So we are trying to make it as uh, easy as possible for the users. So TI is basically a uh, threshold ECDSA based bridge using our own set of validators. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Oh, you can hear me now. Um, so I have a question. So yes. you're creating this high frequency trading platform. Are you, do you have any sort of compliance elements to it to avoid traders coming in and deploying sort of bait and switch type, type trading me mechanic? I'm really sorry, I'm not able to follow your accent. Maybe, you know, <laughs> you should help me. Yeah, yeah, maybe slowly a little bit more. So, um, you're building a high frequency trading platform. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any sort of compliance elements to avoid people putting in sort of bait and switch trading mechanisms? Uh, to avoid people from using. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly why we have the enclave mechanism for, right? We know that you, know, you need to have hundreds and thousands of traders because we got feedback from the uh, trading bot companies and uh, people who are really into commercial trading, right? Including uh, large market makers. You end up placing thousands of traders per second, so you should be able to cancel that. So you cannot run it on chain. So it's kind of impossible right now. Uh, so we have to take the trade-off of running it on an enclave, which will allow you to cancel, open, cancel as many times as you want. No fees. Yeah. That has the potential to manipulate the market exactly the same potential as in a centralized exchange, but with the actual asset. We, you know, you cannot uh, wash trade. You know, you cannot make up a trade there as an exchange, you know, there's nobody, it's people's funds. So you cannot uh, make it appear that there is more than volume that is actually there. As in a centralized exchange, right? You can actually cook up the whole order book if you want to. It's impossible in a system like this because people control the funds. Yeah, yeah, thank you. 